Hello everybody and welcome to another Gear Talk and this time uh, the full review of the Pentax K3 Monochrome. Before we begin, as usual, if you want to support the channel please put a like, subscribe, share with your friends and if you want to go a step further check out the link in the description and you can find uh, my website and the books I wrote, Inject Final Printing, Photography Death Manual and Lasting Photographs, a novel with a photographic plot, very good reviews. This sale, let's talk about the K3 monochrome. Uh, short version, I'm in love with this camera. I had this camera from FOA, the Italian importer of Pentax. Thank you for lending me this camera. And uh, it will be a very sad day when I have to give it back in a few days. Uh, absolutely, I love this camera. The quality of the images is fantastic. Pentax did a fantastic job. But before we begin, here a little slideshow of images that I made with this camera and then we will talk again about it.
you've seen in the slideshow, the quality of the images is fantastic. Dynamic range, tonalities and everything is absolutely fantastic. But I want to start from the beginning and the, at the beginning I have two things that a little bit uh, uh, disappointed me about this camera. And the fact is that uh, I got the camera in the original box with everything that is in the box and when I opened the box uh, I noticed two things that I don't like and are very common right now with all the manufacturers and uh, all the producers of camera and one of them is the manual. The manual is not uh, a real manual, it's just a very short version in different languages with uh, the basic instruction to turn on the camera and put the charger. But uh, it's not a manual and I love to have a physical manual in my bag. Digital cameras are complex cameras, uh, a lot of different functions that you need to know how to use and so on. A lot of time I'm around, I think I want to use this different function but uh, I didn't use for a while, I don't remember exactly how to reach the settings in the menu and the manual is essential. Uh, the fact that I have to go on the website, download it, print it, cut it, put it together putting my bags and so on is something that for me is annoying and for this price range of this camera or any camera that is over thousand dollars I really expect and I would love to have a physical manual sadly it's something that is not common at all the second thing that uh, really uh, was uh, again another little thing is that uh, with the camera you receive uh, a power adapter to put uh, an USB cable and put the USB-C on the other side and charge the camera, charge the battery. Uh, I love to have an option to charge the battery in a separate way. I love to have a charger. A charger is something that is really a few bucks uh, and uh, I would love to see it. By the way, to charge your camera using the USB-C, there's also another little problem that uh, it's not just that it's uh, kind of uncomfortable, but it's also that you can wear out the USB-C plug. So uh, these are two details that I didn't like. And now I can go on with what I loved about this camera and it's everything and I want to get one for myself. The first thing that is impressing with this camera is uh, how beautiful are the files also at high ISO. Uh, I did uh, a studio comparison that you can check here in this video where I compared the monochrome to the color version of the K3 Mark III and I compare the noise in studio at different uh, uh, ISO settings. You can go up to 51,000 ISO and so on and still have a fantastic file. 51,000 you have a little bit of grain that is a little bit of noise that seems uh, the grain of a 100 ISO film and so it's absolutely fantastic. The beautiful things of that is not just that you can do low light photography but it's also that it means there's a great dynamic range in the camera and you can recover the shadows very well. By the way, before I go on, I, don't, I will not give you all the specification about the camera, you can find them online, uh, 25 megapixel, 14 bits and so on. But uh, I want to talk to you about my experience and my personal test. The dynamic range of this camera is absolutely fantastic. I did some tests in my studio, uh, I used some uh, a week of uh, heavy rain that we had, we had here around to do things in the studio, and uh, you can really go down with under exposure uh, without worrying. Uh, if you think uh, about uh, the zone system, uh, probably you have the highlights uh, and uh, that are really. Uh, it's not much extended in the highlights, it's three stop and you probably cut out your white without any de detail. But you can go down in the shadow and you can have a zone 2 that probably has uh, minus uh, 10 stops or something like that. So it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, you can see here the files that I tested and uh, at uh, minus 5 stop you can recover without any problem and almost you don't notice any noise coming up. 
you can go down seven stops and ten stops i did these things and even in ten stops uh, of uh, under exposure you can see that yes you have noise in the dark areas but uh, on the middle gray so exactly ten stops below the medium gray you can still have details dynamic range is absolutely fantastic something that uh, if i have to compare with film uh, i had this kind of dynamic range uh, with uh, medium format or large format and a little bit of overexposure and of development and so on so it's really a fantastic camera that goes uh, really deep in the shadows and uh, something that uh, in studio is one thing and i will probably do a video just about that but uh, uh, in studio was one thing in real life uh, it's uh, another thing and is absolutely fantastic i was uh, Taking photograph in the Vico Fort uh, in Mondovi, in, uh, is uh, near my home here in uh, in Italy. A beautiful church, uh, and uh, I saw this uh, window with the sunlight straight on the back, so it was uh, very very bright, and the inside of the church was very very dark. So, absolutely a very contrasty shame. And I say to myself, okay, now I can put the camera to the limits. And I was sure, was sure to find the limits of this camera. So I took the pictures. By the way, I used the exposure mode that is uh, keeping the highlights. And that's something that is uh, absolutely uh, fantastic to have. It's something that you have on the K3 monochrome and on the K3 color version. And it's a setting of the exposure meter where the highlights are preserved. So you always have your highlights inside the Instagram and then you will work to recover the shadows. With this camera, it's fantastic. I used the setting, I took the picture and when I recovered the shadows, I was absolutely impressed. Uh, you can see details in areas that were totally, totally underexposed of the image. So you can recover them no noise and uh, you can keep not just the lack of noise but the beautiful tonal separation something that this camera have that is impressive is the quality of the of the tonalities the mid-tones the mid-tones are separate and still are uh, kind of uh, with soft transition so it's beautiful the quantity of mid-tones that you get is beautiful and all these with uh, a sharpness that is impressive. Uh, sharpness that is natural sharpness. is not uh, an artificial sharpness inserted in the conversion. If you want to check the difference between uh, the color version and the monochrome version, you can check here. I did a video and uh, comparing the, the two cameras. And uh, you can see that in the color version, there is always some uh, kind of uh, sharpness added that is uh, kind of an artifact. It shows the pixel as a little bit more square. In this case, the pixel are, uh, I don't know, are not cut with an axe. The transition are very sweet and soft. So, I really loved that. Uh, it's a camera that uh, really uh, gave me again that uh, feeling I have with uh, film photography. So, it's absolutely a fantastic sensor. Obviously, with the monochrome sensor, you have some limits in post-production. You cannot think, now I insert something that simulates uh, a yellow filter, red filter, so I can increase the contrast in the sky, and so on. You have to think about that when you take the picture. You have to put the filters physically on the lens. By the way, I will do a little video uh, just about this i don't want to get too long in this review so there will be a video about uh, uh, the use of filters on a monochrome camera but uh, something that i like i like to have the post-processing limits right now i look around and i think that most of images are too much post-processed we got this habit to post-process too much to trust too much to um, give too much to the post-processing process uh, we stop to think about the image before and we post-process too much so to have limits it's really something that brings our mind back to what i consider real photography and uh, is the we connect our mind we look at the things 
we think what we we have a vision and we convert the vision in something in an image uh, that is coming from our mind uh, the camera becomes just uh, an instrument that is not influencing what we are doing and that's for me is absolutely a plus and the plus is the fact that when you go around with a camera like this that is only black and white your mind is set to black and white so you really look only for the subjects that are great with black and white. So you look for the quality of light, you look for the contrast, you look, look for the textures, patterns and so on. This is a camera that uh, if you enjoy black and white obviously, but uh, will make you better as photographer. So I absolutely think that Pentax did an absolutely fantastic job. To have a camera like this, at the price range that is absolutely affordable, uh, is not a cheap camera, but uh, is not uh, an expensive camera. It's a mid-range, is two thousand dollar or something, two thousand two hundred. So, great camera, uh, great value, and really, Pentax did a fantastic job. By the way, the fantastic thing of this camera is, uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, it's very easy to use in the menus, it's very easy to use uh, in the various settings, but what is makes it very easy to use is that the exposure meter is absolutely fantastic. The option to preserve the highlights will give you the ability to just put the camera in automatic, you know that there's not uh, noise until uh, upper ISO, so I have this camera set in automatic ISO, uh, aperture priority with the uh, ISO limit at 6400, and I just took pictures, uh, so very, very easy. There's another thing that uh, impressed me about this camera is that uh, when I took the test for the dynamic range in my studio, I did what I always do, and is uh, take a measurement of the light, uh, not just with the camera, but uh, also with a spot meter and a, uh, an incident meter. So I took my flash meter, uh, Minolta flash meter 5, and I read the light. I have put uh, middle gray uh, on the, in the sheen, measured with the spot meter F, and measured then with the spot reading from this camera. And impressively, they read the same. There was the difference was a couple of uh, tenth uh, of uh, stop, nothing more. So it means that the real base of this camera is 200 ISO, as is really 200 ISO. With uh, most of the digital camera I had in my life, I always had to correct uh, uh, in some way the exposure meter in studio because the declared ISO was not corresponding to the real ISO reading with the, with the spot meter. With the camera, I had the ISO at 200 in the camera, base ISO at 200, actually measuring the flash and everything in studio was 100 ISO. So uh, they usually trick the ISO to make you keep the highlights inside the, inside the, the histogram. Uh, in this case, the 200 ISO are real, so that is another thing that I appreciated about this camera. Especially in studio, I love to use the uh, exposure meter, so uh, to have a real ISO, it's absolutely, absolutely great. The construction of the camera is absolutely perfect. Uh, there are a lot of things that I love about Pentax, it's perfect for my fingers, for my hand. Um, it's, I, there are little details that I love, like the uh, depth of field preview that is actual with an on off switch. Uh, I love the use of settings that uh, we can put on the camera and so on. The menus, as I said, are very easy, by the way. Uh, it's beautiful, the fact that everything is in great tonalities, including the menu, there's no color on the camera. This is a little detail that I really like and appreciate. But uh, what really made me love this camera is the quality of the images. Uh, the quality of the images is something that I never seen before in a digital. I like to do black and white. Black and white is something that is my passion. You can check here my black and white tails if you want. And uh, I really love to use black and white uh, when I do photography. Converting from color, yeah, you can have great results. But with a monochrome sensor, it's much 
much better. By the way, if you want to check the file, because uh, every time I talk about the digital camera, about the camera, and I show the results here on YouTube, or I show the results on my website uh, with a compressed JPEG or something like that, I always think uh, that's not a way to judge a camera. Uh, compressing the image, doing a low resolution JPEG or worse of all, YouTube that have the MP4 compression for the video, it really doesn't show all the details of the image. So if you want, there's a link down there in the description. You can go on my website. I write an article while I'm doing this video. So there you will find the original files and you will find the raw files of some images. So you can download them, you can play with them and you can see the real quality. But if you really want to see the quality coming out from a camera like this, get the file, elaborate in the proper way. So do the conversion from raw if in the proper way, keeping the 16-bit, uh, keeping all the color, uh, the color workflow correct, and print the images. In the prints, you will really see the difference. This camera is a little gem. Pentax for me did absolutely a fantastic job. The, the quality of the files are impressive. The camera is absolutely fantastic. And by the way, the fact that this camera is a reflex SLR, so you can see the real sheen in the viewfinder. You don't see the interpretation made by the camera is another essential thing. If you look at the JPEG that you get from this camera, they are good, but uh, the quantity of information that you have in a raw file is absolutely much more. Uh, the example that I used of the window in the charge, uh, if I look at the JPEG, it's just uh, totally black. But I know, looking at the reality, that I can get the details from the raw file. So it's essential to have uh, a viewfinder that is an optical viewfinder and not uh, an electronic viewfinder. So this is something that I really loved about this camera, is the reflex system. And by the way, to be an APS-C is absolutely a fantastic viewfinder. Something I also appreciated is uh, kind of easy also to use manual lenses on this camera. It's easy because uh, all the Pentax K lenses can be mounted and it's easy for the focus. Uh, it's not uh, the perfect uh, focusing screen for a manual uh, focusing, but it's still good enough to be able to focus properly without uh, getting the focus from. This said, I simply love this camera. You've seen the results, you can go on my website and uh, download some of the raw files and I really love this. If you like black and white, if you do black and white as something uh, normal in your life, just get one of these cameras. Uh, it's absolutely a little jewel. It's absolutely something that will change your life. And by the way, to have a camera that you know that is black and white, you don't have the colors, will change your mindset and you will be set to taking photographs in black and white and get much, much better results. So, thank you for watching. There will be another video with the use of, about the use of filters uh, with this camera. And then we will switch to other tools and other cameras. And uh, yes, I will love to buy one of these. Before I say hello, again, if you want to support the channel, lasting photographs, photography dev manual, and inject fine art printing. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.